see all right happens. well then i will call the uh july 12 2021 regular council meeting to order and begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional unceded territory of the kate c kwantlen semiamu and uh, must be First Nations, and for any members of the public who are in attendance to watch these proceedings, welcome. And just a reminder to keep your mics and your cameras off uh, while you are in attendance. So I am Mayor Val Vanderbrook, and with me this afternoon, I have Councillor Paul Albrecht, Councillor Terry James, Councillor Gail Martin, Councillor Nathan Pahal, Councillor Rudy Stortaboom, Councillor Rosemary Wallace, Francis Chung, our Chief Administrative Officer, Darren Light, our Director of Corporate Services, Carl Johansson, our D Director of Development Services, Rick Baumhoff, our Director of Engineering, Parks and Environment, Kim Hilton, our Director of Recreation, Culture and Community Services, and Paula Kuzak, our Deputy Corporate Officer. Okay, so adoption of the July 12, 2021 regular council agenda. Um, before we consider adoption of the agenda, I believe there are some additions to the agenda. Councillor Paul. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to propose uh, adding a motion, which I uh, circulated to council previously. So um, I'll ask Council to pass them um, that the July 12, 2021 agenda be adopted as amended. Uh, I have Councillor James and Councillor Martin. Any further discussion on that? Call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? And that carries. Next, Excuse is me, Council. Val. Uh, yeah, I, I had my hand up to add. I have a notice of motion sure. that I'd like to put forward. And I'm just going to uh, join on my on my laptop, so I may go away for a few minutes. Okay, so you might already notice the motion to be added under new business and do you have the motion ready or? Yes, I do. I do. What do you want me to do? I'm sorry, did you want to present the notice of motion? Uh, under notices of motion, I will, sure. Okay, so um, do we have to add this as an amendment to the agenda? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, if you adopt the agenda as amended, it will include both of the amendments. Okay, so uh, all those in favor of adding that notice of motion, Good on that so that the I'll reread it again so that it's including both the notice of motion and uh, for Councillor Bahal and Councillor Martin. Uh, that the July 12, 2021 agenda be adopted as, um, as amended. Mover and a seconder. Um, I'll do Councillor James and Martin again on that, which were the first. <laughs> Okay, all those in favor, and it carries. Okay, adoption of the minutes, regular meeting minutes from June 28th, 2021, that the minutes of the regular meeting held on June 28th, 2021 be adopted as circulated. Any corrections? Need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Wallace, Councillor Stortaboom, all those in favor, and that carries. Okay, public hearing minutes from June 28th, 2021, that the minutes of the public hearing held on June 28th, 2021, be adopted as circulated. Uh, Councillor Wallace, Councillor Stortaboom, any corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? And that carries. All right, so uh, under Mayor's report, the next upcoming meeting is of regular council is July 26, 2021. <clears throat> the regular uh, council meeting following that is September 13th, 2021. And now we have an update with Councillor Martin on library happenings.
Thank you. Um, ju I'm just trying to get into my, I'm finally on my computer. Okay, library happenings. Okay, I believe there's a slideshow. Is that correct? Yes, it's just yes. getting loaded now. Okay. Okay, so the upcoming programs, um, you can become a magical detective with magician Leif David by decoding documents, matching fingerprints and watching the magic closely for extra clues. In the end, you'll be able to solve the mystery in crack the case. Slide three, learn how to identify local trees through the legend of the Western Hemlock as told by a Metro Vancouver Regional Park interpreter. Then team up with Hemlock Cones, nature detective to solve the case of the missing Hemlock Cones. And slide four, you can join Grace Lynn as she reads from her Calcock honor book, A Big Mooncake for a Little Star and teaches you how to draw a moon bunny. This author visit is for ages three to eight. Eric Litwin is a song singing guitar strumming number one New York Times bestselling award-winning author who brings early literacy and music together. Sing along as he reads from his popular and well-known Pete the Cat series that is fun for all ages. And you can join us for family fun for family fun time and create some musical memories together, you will learn about the different parts of the ukulele, as well as how to hold, tune, and strum. You will even learn a few chords and play some songs together. And who is pulling the strings? You might find out when you join ventriloquist Kelly Haynes. Kelly started talking to her stuffed animals at an early age, and when she was eight years old, they started talking back. And don't miss Newberry medalist Eric Aaron and Trotta Kelly talking about her latest illustrated novel for middle graders, Maybe Maybe Marisol Rainey. It's about summer, friendship, and overcoming fears. New York Times bestselling author Tracy Baptiste will talk about being creative under pressure. She will introduce her body of work, including the Jumbies series, Minecraft, The Crash, as well as her upcoming picture book and nonfiction book for middle school readers. Both of these presentations are suited for ages eight and up. And Saudi Farqui, Pakistani American children's author, will talk about her publication journey, give some tips to aspiring writers, and read from her latest books, including the Yasmin series for ages six and up. And Richard Van Camp is a proud member of the Dog Rib Nation from Fort Smith, Northwest Territories, an internationally renowned storyteller and best-selling author. He has penned numerous titles for babies to adults, even including comic books. Learn more about his various works during this enchanting presentation for all ages. And you can put together a team of your fellow smarty pants and test your knowledge of various online themed trivia programs this summer. The Sphero challenges continue. Race against the clock with coding tasks in July, then test your creativity in designing a chariot attachment for the August event. Be sure to check out a Sphero beforehand to be ready for the challenges. And you can join Hide a Storyteller, Kung JD, as she shares Hide a Legends as well as stories of her life culture and history. Drum, rattle, and song and dance are used to bring you into the world of the stories she tells. And science meets circus with Professor Wow. Join him for mind-boggling circus skills that will reveal the magical world of science around us. The mysteries of force, lift, sound, and motion are unraveled through juggling, balancing, and more. Watch and learn, then try these tricks. And that's the programs, um, quite a few for the summer. Thank you. Great. Thank you for that update. Um, anybody have any questions or comments for Councillor Martin? I don't see any hands, so thank you very much.
All right, we have an engineering update next with Rick Baumhofer, Director of Engineering Parks and Environment. Thank you very much. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, uh, sprinkling restrictions uh, remain in place and they will all summer. Um, so we're in stage one still, it hasn't raised to stage two. Uh, residential water, lawn watering uh, is allowed an even number of addresses Wednesday and Saturday mornings from four to 9 a.m. An odd numbered address is Thursday and Sundays mornings uh, from four to nine. And watering trees, shrubs, and flowers is permitted any day during those same hours from four to nine. If using a sprinkler or any time hand watering or using a drip irrigation. Also stage one for non-residential lawn watering uh, is allowed on even numbered addresses Monday mornings from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. and Friday mornings from 4 a.m. to 9 a.m. And odd numbered addresses Tuesday mornings 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. and Friday mornings uh, 4 a.m. to 9 a.m. Watering trees, shrubs, and flowers is permitted any day from 1 to 1 a.m. to 9 a.m. if using sprinkler or any kind of hand water or using drip irrigation. With the forecast, uh, a long term looks like it's going to be sunny weather for, for a foreseeable future. Uh, we could easily see ourselves getting into uh, stage two. Uh, so it's important that uh, residents follow the stage one restrictions so that we can hopefully avoid getting into more restrictions. And this is a shot of uh, new uh, speed signs added onto the speed reader boards. So, received a number of comments regarding the speed and, and not necessarily knowing the speed limit, even though any, anywhere in the city, unless otherwise posted, it's 50 kilometers, but we thought it would be helpful to add it right above the speed board. So, so those will be on, every, wherever you see a speed reader board, they will eventually be installed in the next week or two. This is a shot of uh, AC water main replacement on uh, 198th Street at 46th Avenue. It's part of our ongoing infrastructure uh, asset management program to replace all of our AC water pipes. And this is a shot showing uh, intersection signal control cameras installed uh, along Glover Road, uh, the Glover Road intersection. And that what this does is it avoids the need to have uh, these detection circles uh, put into the pavement. And um, it's, it's a more, I guess, call it a sophisticated system that we can uh, monitor and ensure you know, a proper traffic control in all the intersections. We've also completed some electrical improvements at Douglas Park to facilitate uh, Christmas displays uh, for this winter. And this is a picture showing uh, just it's a fairly regular occurrence where there would be a water leak and uh, the crews come in and do the repairs. But I just wanted to show on the left hand side, you know, this is what residents might see a bit of ex excess water. And of course, in this really dry period, that's an odd thing to see out on the road. So please uh, call in any, any situations where you might see this on your street uh, and call it into the city so we can check it. Also, we continued on with uh, our paving program and this is showing uh, some patch, patch paving on 53rd Avenue near 201A. And this is along uh, Fraser Highway, just near um, also 201A. We installed new bleachers at Condor Park. Also uh, additional paving along pathways within the Micometro floodplain. We've also installed new signage uh, for city parks. So what we've done is combined 
uh, of many of the signs that used to be kind of a whole mishmash of different signs on, on various poles. So we combine them all for readability and ease so uh, you know, people can see them all in one location, what the restrictions are, and what we're asking people to do in the various parks. And of course, everybody has seen the, this shot, but it uh, shows the umbrella installation at McBurney Plaza. I've also seen my daughter actually forwarded me a shot of a friend of hers who posted it on their Instagram. So it is getting recognition out there. Just want to also list out some projects that we're currently working on. The Glover Road Utilities and Cycling Improvements. That is scheduled to start uh, actually uh, tomorrow or, or the next day. So that will be uh, work happening soon. Also the 208th Street Cycling Improvements. The tender is scheduled to go out on July 14th. So that is the section along the um, 208 connector. So between Fraser Highway and I think it's around 54th Avenue. Um, there'll be cycling improvements. So currently the bike lanes just end quite abruptly and uh, there is no cycling uh, indicators from, from between those two sections. We're also, um, we will be milling and repaving a significant portion of 200th Street from the CP rail tracks to 62nd Avenue, which is scheduled for August. So that will be uh, the full road width on 200th Street up to the bypass. Uh, it, so it won't include the bypass section, but it will go right from the CP rail tracks to 62nd Avenue. We're also doing uh, culvert cleaning and assessment. That work will start August 1st. And the two locations at a map here just shows on 200th Avenue, just north of the show, and also on 55A, uh, just to the west of Riding Crescent. 200th Street Sanitary Sewer Replacement will also be completed on 49th Avenue, uh, the Nicomeco floodplain, uh, scheduled to start in August or September. And that will largely be done through uh, uh, trench lift technology. There will be some access holes that they need to construct, but it's all being done uh, to try and avoid uh, traffic, traffic interruption. There's also a retaining wall assessment being completed uh, for inspection and assessment is scheduled to start this week. And we also have the Portage Park Sports Court tender has closed. We're just assessing the results and that will involve the replacement of the current sports court or tennis, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, basketball court there, half court, and it'll be a, a full sports court, not quite as big as the one at Tender Park, but a similar type of uh, sports court. And also we are completing uh, the traffic signal at 48th Avenue and 200th Street in the detailed design stage and uh, tender is scheduled for late July. There's also uh, working on the Nicomeco floodplain mapping has been awarded. That's the one you might recall uh, we received 100% grant funding for. And we've also embarked on the transportation master plan. The RFP has been issued and the water and sewer master plans have been awarded. Now that the OCP is largely, you know, in its final, you know, coming to final format, we're able to start these master plans. And of course, as you've seen previously, the subdivision and approved the first two readings of the bylaw, subdivision development bylaw and the design criteria update. Thank you very much. Great, thank you and your team for all the great work you're doing. Councillor Stortebim, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Baumhoff, for your uh, amazing report. Um, the work that you and your team do in my community in our city is, is just phenomenal. Um, I go for walks every day and I can see what you're doing in my neighborhood, but I can see from your report that 
you're active throughout the city. And I really want to appreciate you for that. Um, I can tell you that there's a lot of people give me feedback on how uh, pleasant it is to walk the floodplain these days. Uh, I think I'm not the only one walking and uh, the care of the trails has been especially worthwhile. I was at Sendell Gardens the other day for a small pop-up concert with uh, councillors uh, Hall and James. And um, I can tell you that, that this, the park is just stunning. It's beautiful. I encourage everyone to take advantage of uh, what we have to offer because of the hard work of our people and uh, our uh, parks and works departments. For myself, I'm very much impressed by the intersection or the uh, crosswalk uh, at the top of 208 Street Hill uh, heading south. I think that really worked out a lot better than I expected. So uh, again, my compliments for that. It has been brought to my attention though that there are uh, two crosswalks between 48th Avenue and uh, 53rd Avenue moving north. And that one has, um, crosswalk signal and one does not and I couldn't explain why that was could you maybe give me a little insight on that there is uh we have assessed the one crosswalk and it's, it's relatively close to the intersection at 53rd avenue so it's not that far to actually get to a control signal if that's something that the public wants of course, we're, we're always trying to manage both the pedestrian as well as traffic flows. So to date, we haven't uh, considered another signal for pedestrians in that area. Yeah, I'm sorry. That wasn't really clear. Maybe my technology, but you say that uh, you're, you're looking at it and uh, it may be too close to the intersection at 53rd. So um, there may be some change upcoming. I'm sorry I missed that. Oh, sorry. No, what, what I, sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay. Um, no, the, 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 the crosswalk, I believe that you're talking about, I, I don't know what, what specific intersection is that one at? Well, this would be the one nearest to uh, 53rd Avenue on 208th street. Um, yeah. It's just that there's, there's two on that stretch, uh, two crosswalks and, and one is signaled and one is not, and I couldn't explain why that was. Now, I'm hearing from you that the one closest to 53rd is considered too close to that intersection. Am I mistaken? That's correct. So it's, it's within a reasonable time frame of walking, you know, to get to a controlled signal versus the uncontrolled. So if people feel better, you know, using the controlled crosswalk, then they can walk to that intersection. I understand. I understand. And they could probably time their crossing and keeping with that intersection traffic light as well. Right. Thank you for that update. Thank you for your report. And thank you for all the hard work that you do in the community. I really appreciate what you're doing in my city. And thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor uh, Bahal. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just uh, Mr. Baumhoff. I think you might have mentioned this already, but how does the funding work with the Ministry of Transportation section with that paving? We're doing from the railway to 62nd. They are sharing in the in the cost. Um, I don't. I'm pretty sure it's it's 50. percent They're actually cost sharing equally with us. If, if it's different, that I that I will get back to you. But I'm pretty confident that's what it is. So um, for that section of road, is it actually a provincial road, or is it a or is it actually our road? Um, at the end of the day. It is a city road, but where, where it intersects with the provincial highway, there's an agreement that we have and they have with all municipalities that their uh, cost sharing, you know, of course the bypass is 100% them. The, the other, the intersecting roads are shared in, you know, I think it's a 50-50 share you know, for any works on the asphalt itself, any, you know, kind of curbs or sidewalks or medians, that's all this responsibility of the local jurisdiction, but the asphalt portion is shared. Cool, and this might be a little uh, obscure question then. So like I noticed the city replaced all our LED lights, except on the section of road that's by the provincial highways. Is that provincial lights or are those our lights? That and if you don't have the answer, that's okay. Yeah, I, I'll have to check into that. Yeah. Okay, cool. 
Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Great, thanks. Councillor Wallace, go ahead. Thank you to the mayor, to um, Rick Baumhoff. Uh, just a, a few comments and some questions. Um, thank you for your report. Uh, I really appreciate the new signs that are in the trails. Um, and I just have a, a question in regards to bleachers. You said at Condor Park, we also have bleachers at Douglas Park and where the funding came for that, for the bleachers uh, at the pickleball court. And I know that there's, um, I think it's going to be more benches um, along a trail of uh, Douglas Park, uh, closer to the community gardens. I know there's um, blocks of um, cement and is that for new benches? I'm just, just uh, curious. Um, and then um, amazing uh, with the sports court at uh, Portage Park. I, I noticed a lot of families are using that park, so it's nice to be able to have a, a sports par um, park or sports court there. And my last comment or question, is it possible to get more trees? And I know it's not a time to plant trees, it's, it's, it's hot, but I'm thinking a lot of our parks like City Park, Douglas Park, Portage Park, um, we have a lot of trees for shade and I'm thinking Linwood Park, which is used by a lot of families, and I think we've talked about this before, it's such a large area, if there would be a way to maybe in the center of that park, put some, some shading just for, for future, um, just I'm concerned about the, heat, the recent heat wave we've had and just in the future, if, if that's a possibility. I know that was a lot of questions and comments, but I really do appreciate your report and, and what you guys are doing in the city. And it's amazing the amount of parks that are being used in Sendal Gardens. Yeah, it's just, uh, I used to think it was my secret garden, but it is no longer <laughs> a secret garden. Um, it is so many people are using um, Sendal Gardens. It's absolutely beautiful. So congratulations to your staff. Yes, thank you. Um, so Linwood, I, I'm wondering, uh, we're, we're currently doing a park map and recreation culture master plan. That that might be a question that we put out to the public and for consultation to see what changes they would like to see at Linwood. Because we have the sports fields, you know, and I don't know how well used those are. You know, so it, it, it just depends on you know, council's vision for that area and well as what the public would like to see. So maybe we could include that in the discussions as we go through the master plan. Um, and as far as the uh, benches and the concrete pads, I would need to double check to see, you know, it, it might be one of the donations, you know, that people have made and we've looked at uh, installing new benches in Douglas Park. I'd have to just double check with our parks manager to see if we've received requests. I know I, I didn't actually show some of the pictures, but I think there's two or three trees that were added at, uh, at Douglas Park as well as part of the donation program. So it's definitely, it, it's definitely happening. We just need to be strategic as far as where we put those trees so that we can still use you know, different sections of the park for, for what we'd like to see if, even in the long-term future. We have to put them strategically so that we don't have to put them, pull them out later. Is that sorry? Was there another question that I missed? Um, yeah, the bleachers at the. Um, oh, right. I guess we have two sets of bleachers: one at Condor Park and uh, one where the pickleball court is. And I was just wanting to know that's just you know where that came came from as far as the funding. That came through the capital program. Mm -hmm. Right. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, it's Mr. Baumhoff. Yeah, just a piggy tail actually on what uh, Councillor Wallace was saying about uh, trees for shade. I know a lot of communities in regards to this heat wave we've been having have been calling on cities to, I think there's a petition going right now to have um, um, shade tents put up over playgrounds in the future for children to prevent sun cancer, like skin cancer and prevent the sun from coming down and, and that sort. So I don't know if we've ever thought about it, but just since Councillor Wallace brought up the trees, um, something else to maybe think about as well. 
just in the news. Awesome, thank you. I can also elaborate on the capital fund for funding the bleachers. That it, it was funded, the root funding of it is through the community, community amenity fund, which was put through into the capital program. Okay, does anybody else have any questions or more comments for Mr. Bonhoff? No, nope. all right, well, thank you. I do, Val, I have my hand up. Oh, sorry, Councillor Martin, I did not see it. Go ahead. That's okay. Uh, yeah, speaking of Linwood Park, um, I'm going to go way out on left field here. Um, I drive by that park almost daily, and there's always tons of kids in that park. And I know this can't be decided on now, but what I've been thinking would be nice in that park is, is a water park. There's lots of room in that park, and there's so many kids that live in that area. Um, it might be something, if we ever have a blue sky session, that's something that I'm going to put forward. And I don't know if there's ever been any thought to that. But, um, I mean, you know, the closest water park really for the kids on this side of town is, is basically Douglas Park. So I think Linwood would be a great place to have a water park for the kids. Just putting it out there. Thank you. Well, it's another good question for the, the park's master plan as well. You know that we can we can uh, kind of guide some discussion and see you know specifically what kind of features and we can maybe suggest that as a feature for the public to see what kind of response we get. Great, yeah, that's a great suggestion. Okay, anyone else? Does anyone else? No, sorry. Okay. All right, moving on to bylaws section of our agenda. Um, explanatory report, a public hearing input on OCP bylaw number 3200 and proposed bylaw updates. And I believe Mr. Johansson, you have a report to present. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Uh, thanks for having us uh, here to report back on the input we received. Uh, on the public hearing on OCP bylaw number 3200. After a careful review and consideration, staff have put together a series of responses, uh, rationale and proposed updates to the bylaw. And uh, Patrick is here with us today to provide an overview of uh, the input uh, responses and, and proposed updates to the bylaw uh, as detailed in the report and attached tables uh, that you have before you today. Uh, the bylaw itself is not on the agenda today. Uh, so today provides an opportunity for uh, review of the input and uh, the proposed uh, uh, updates uh, to the bylaw. And before I hand things over to Patrick, I just wanted to correct a number in the report. I believe I mentioned 14 uh, attendees at the public hearing provided specific input. It was actually 15, so I just wanted to correct that. And lastly, as, um, as Patrick will further elaborate on in his uh, brief presentation, uh, staff seek council's direction on the proposed updates that we have in the report. And uh, this is recommended uh, to occur uh, through council resolution if possible. Thank you and uh, over to Patrick. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council, and thanks again for uh, welcoming me here. I'm just going to share my screen as I've got a few slides uh, for the presentation here. All right, so I, can everybody see that? Great. So I will just go over a quick overview of the project um, uh, and where we find ourselves today. Then uh, we'll give a bit of a summary of the public hearing feedback. Um, some proposed updates uh, as a result of that feedback, and then just a quick slide on next steps. So it's a short slide deck today. Um, in terms of the project, we find ourselves in the final phase uh, for both the OCP update and the Nicomechal River District Neighborhood Plan, um, which is essentially about finalizing the plan and adopting bylaw. Um, similarly, with the Nicomechal River District, we find ourselves in that final stage really looking to finalize the plan. Um, what we have done in terms of adoption of this bylaw so far is we held uh, 
first and second readings. Uh, we passed first and second readings on May 31st. We held a public hearing on June 28th. Um, and today, as Carl had just mentioned, we are um, going to be considering the public hearing feedback and the proposed updates uh, as a result of that feedback. So for some of the feedback that we have heard. Um, so this is a, a quick summary. Um, but so among other input, the feedback themes that we heard included um, the proposed ground oriented residential land use designation that's south of the Nicomechal River and uh, the potential for negative impacts related to property assembly. Um, we heard some feedback in relation to the conceptual path south of the Nicomechal River between 200 Street and Hinole Park, and the potential environmental security and privacy impacts. Uh, we also heard uh, some comments around height and density of townhouses in that ground oriented land use designation specifically. Um, we heard comments around the proposed pedestrian and vehicle access uh, in the 198th Street and 53 Avenue area. Um, and finally, we heard uh, some comments around redevelopment of properties without property owner consent. And so uh, we, along with that public feedback, we also received agency feedback uh, from the referrals that we sent out. And so that agency feedback uh, is, is summarized here. It came back from five different agencies, the first being the Downtown Langley Business Association, uh, which generally uh, said that the, the document is well thought out and that it will serve the downtown and Langley City residents well into the future. Uh, Kwantlen Polytechnic University also provided some feedback. Um, they expressed general support for the OCP, including the specific designation that's applied to their campus, um, the university district land use designation. Um, they also expressed support for the Innovation Boulevard, which connects them to the downtown and the end of, uh, or the beginning of the Sky Train line along Glover Road there, um, and support for a high density mixed use downtown core and how that uh, will positively impact uh, the Kwantlen Polytechnic University campus um, in Langley City. We also received uh, comments from the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure, and uh, their comments were related to the potential traffic impacts that this uh, uh, that the higher density land use designations could um, uh, uh, could create on the Langley Bypass. Um, so that's something that uh, we we believe uh, can be addressed through uh, the transportation master plan in the future. Um, Township of Langley has also uh, provided some feedback, specifically opportunities to collaborate on community amenities and planning efforts in the area surrounding the 196 Sky, uh, Street SkyTrain station and where the Willowbrook Mall is. Um, and finally, TransLink had provided a, a long list of, of, uh, of points um, specifically related to active transportation and transit infrastructure. Um, so specifically um, looking to align the proposed plans with TransLink's goals and suggested uh, some policy changes um, to more strongly encourage transit use and active transportation modes. So there's some minor map changes uh, to reflect the existing transit system and some cycling routes that are uh, that have regional implications there. So with that feedback, we've uh, prepared a list of uh, proposed updates in the council uh, package. Um, we first would like to mention that in terms of the land use plan, we don't, uh, we are not considering any uh, uh, additional changes to the specific land use designations or the, the map of land use. Um, and part of the reason that we aren't considering changes at this point is um, it's our recommendation that the, that the changes that have already occurred as a result of phase three engagement um, uh, reflect uh, some of the concerns have already addressed some of the concerns that have been expressed. So specifically the removal of study areas, um, the reduction in the ground oriented densities from 1.6 to 1.2 FAR, um, the clarification of where townhomes and flex housing may be located, specifically townhomes closer to major corridors and plex housing sort of in the back, uh, you know, uh, to, to better integrate with some of the single detached neighborhoods. Um, and then stronger development permit guidelines as well to enable uh, the sensitive integration there of ground oriented units next to uh, single detached homes in those existing neighborhoods. And so we feel that the changes that were introduced earlier on in the process address many of the concerns that have been uh, that have been expressed so far. 
So just a summary of the key policy updates. I have a list of about, I believe it's eight uh, key policy updates here. There's, there's a few others in the council package, but uh, these are the sort of major ones or the more um, important ones perhaps. Um, the first being clarifying that the proposed new path in the Nicomechel River District Neighborhood Plan, um, so policy 1.2 on page 17, um, is conceptual and will require several additional steps, including further review, uh, specifically technical analysis and public consultation with residents prior to determining uh, the specific alignment. So we just want to clarify that in the plan that this isn't uh, this isn't uh, written in stone, that there's a process that needs to be followed to ensure that those concerns are addressed. Um, also clarifying the pedestrian and vehicular access in the Nicomechel River District Neighborhood Plan um, in, that, uh, in that area that I mentioned earlier, um, policy 6.11 and on page 30 will only be created through future redevelopment. So this is not something that the city would go to try and expropriate um, uh, properties to do. This is something that would happen in time when property owners are ready to redevelop their property, then we'd ask for dedication in those areas. Um, also, so the third point here being that uh, we like to provide additional justification for the general environmental development permit guidelines in the OCP, so pages uh, 72 to 73, um, and that's uh, specifically to um, ensure that our justification is um, speaks to the impacts of climate change and making sure that uh, that uh, new development is is resilient and energy efficient and um, and addresses some of those concerns around uh, climate change. We'd like to also add a new policy to the OCP's uh, safe and inclusive city rich with community amenities uh, chapter. Uh, so those are pages 48 to 55. Um, just to note um, the potential for future collaboration with Surrey and the Township of Langley in considering shared community services and amenities specifically around that 196 station around Willowbrook. There's going to be a lot of redevelopment in that area. Um, given it's right at the corner of the three municipalities, there's an opportunity to ensure that we're not doubling up our efforts around community amenities, that we can certainly uh, all do our parts and, and have a, a cohesive neighborhood there across the boundaries of our municipalities. Um, so the fifth point here is updating the potential study area on um, OCP map two um, to include all the properties along the Langley City Bypass or Langley Bypass, I should say, between Fraser Highway and the vicinity of 201A Street and 202 Street. So that's um, really to include all those areas that have uh, the potential to redevelop given the SkyTrain um, stations uh, in, in close proximity to this area um, and, and wanting to, again, uh, think of how uh, this happens in concert with uh, the Township of Langley and the City of Surrey. So really thinking about that whole area as a study area to, to look at in the future. The sixth point is uh, about updating the engagement summary to confirm the maximum townhouse density is 1.2 FAR for areas both north and south of the Nicomechel River across all ground oriented land use designations. So this is just to update that engagement summary, make sure that the language is very clear so that when it gets posted online, um, it's, uh, there's no confusion. Um, this won't have any kind of impact on the bylaw itself. Um, in terms of the seventh key point here that we'd like to uh, bring attention to is updating maps and policies in response to input from TransLink regarding accessibility, um, existing facilities, new transit infrastructure, parking reductions, and specific transportation related in, um, items and investments, including the integration with regional greenway and cycling initiatives. So there's a, a few points that they noted um, with regards to our maps uh, that, and, and a few policies here and there that they would like to see tweaks. Um, to and so uh, we'd like to make sure that those are aligned with TransLink's objectives and goals. And finally, um, adding a reference to uh, the Vancouver, Victoria, and Eastern Railway in the history and context section. Um, so I believe, uh, as it is today, there's only one of the railways that is mentioned um, and not um, all three here. And so we want the OCP to reflect the role that that railway had in shaping the city's present day road pattern. That's the one around ground uh, that, that went along Great Crescent in that alignment there. So those are the key policy updates that we uh, that we are proposing as a result of the feedback that we've heard. And as Carl mentioned, um, if uh, or should council agree with the staff recommendations in your council package, um, we would ask for a resolution um, to make 
the proposed updates and present an updated bylaw for third reading at a future council meeting. Um, and should council desire changes to the staff recommendations that we've provided in the package, um, we would ask for a resolution to modify the proposed updates in DOOR to make additional updates um, as directed by council um, so that we can then present an updated bylaw for third reading at a future council meeting. Um, and so I'll just go through some next steps uh, real quickly here, and then we can move on to the council discussion. Um, so July 26th is when we see the potential to bring back an updated bylaw, provided we uh, receive a resolution today. Um, and uh, that would also allow us for to potentially send the referral to Metro Vancouver for approval of the regional context statement. Um, that means that we would then wait for uh, the regional context statement to be accepted by Metro Vancouver, and then we can consider adoption of the OCP bylaw um, by September or October. There's a rough timeline there. And so with that, I will uh, finish my presentation here and pass it on to uh, Mayor and Council. Thank you very much. Great, thank you so much for that update. Um, it's great to see that you've taken all their concerns and redone it and it's in plain language. So I know I appreciate it. I'm sure everybody else does as well. So thank you for doing that. Um, I have Councillor Martin and then Councillor Bahal, please. Thank you. Well, first of all, I wanna to say to, to Patrick and Carl, you guys have done a, an amazing job on, on getting this together. It's it's been a lot of work and it's probably been twice as hard because of the pandemic. So kudos to everyone that's been involved in this. It's, it's been a great process, uh, especially given all the hurdles that you have to go through. The question I have is in regards to the South Trail, um, there was concern um, about the environment and about the animals and what have you and protecting them. But all but two of the properties along that stretch are encroaching on the floodplain to the point where even some of them, I, I would venture to guess half of their backyard is made up of the floodplain. So was that ever taken into consideration when you were planning this trail? I mean, I know you're going to look at, at replanning and, and consultation and everything like that, but um, you know, for years they've they've those properties have been encroaching on the floodplain. And in the minute that we want to put something there for the whole community, and I think a loop trail is, is a great idea. Um, I, I just, I, I'm concerned about this encroachment and you know their privacy and what have you. I guess if they weren't encroaching on the floodplain, they'd have a lot more privacy if this trail went in. Um, <laughs> through the mayor to Councillor Martin, um, certainly the um, ecological impacts have been considered. I think one of the one of the main um, one of the main or the key ideas behind having a path like this is that it would be done in conjunction with ecological restoration of the floodplain. So. I think we mentioned this earlier in the public hearing as a response, but that um, you know many of the grasses and, and some of the vegetation that exists uh, in that part of the floodplain is, is are remnants of past agricultural practices and aren't of uh, native species to that area. And so to protect salmon habitat and to protect um, some of the local wildlife, um, it would be great to get, uh, yeah, some, um, there, there likely are some opportunities for funding and for, um, yeah, restoring some of the habitat. And it's with that kind of project that we could potentially look at a path uh, that would uh, go and, and connect um, 200th Street to Heinel Park there. Um, the specific question around whether the encroachment of the properties was considered, that wasn't necessarily, uh, you know, that, that wasn't a particular uh, top of mind um, consideration when we were proposing that uh, specific path or its location. Well, thank you, Patrick. If I may suggest, you might want to look at the map that we have of the properties that are encroaching. As I say, all but two of the properties along that back part there are encroaching on the property. Um, I'm even told that one of the neighbors has a ride on lawnmower and lawn, you know, cuts all the grass along there. And you know, thank you for keeping city property uh, cut, but uh, it is city property, um, 
And, you know, I'm not trying to cause a problem for the homeowners here, but, you know, they talk about the environment, they talk about the animals, they talk about privacy, when in fact, as I said, at least two of the properties have more than half or at least half of their backyard encroaching on the, on the floodplain. So I think that we should take that into consideration um, at some point. That's all I've got to say about that, but thank you for all your work, Patrick and, and Carl. I can't unmute. Can you hear me? Okay, sorry, Mike. I don't know why my mute button's working and then not working. Mr. Johansson, you had a comment. You had your hand raised. Oh, yes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just following up from Patrick's comments and, you know, like we've highlighted, is it is conceptual. And there's multiple steps that need to be taken to, uh, uh, to look at alignments. And uh, like Patrick said, there's environmental reviews, engineering review. There's further consultation even before you get to uh, the potential for scoping out a specific project. So... Uh, there's a number of steps there, and uh, uh, thanks for the comments on the, uh, the encroachment issue. Councillor Pahal, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And I'm just going to propose a motion that Council directs staff to include the proposed updates found in Table 2 of this report uh, to the official community plan bylaw number 3200 for consideration at third reading. Yeah, I'll second that. Uh, Councillor James seconded it, I believe. And then if I may, okay. uh, Madam Mayor. Yeah, sure, just thanks. And continue. Great, yeah, and I, I just wanted to highlight that um, I know that I considered all the feedback received from the public hearing written correspondence and to see that staff basically took that, which what I was thinking about and they've, not that I thought about all of it, obviously I am one person, uh, I'm, I'm not, that full of myself, but there are 70 uh, changes based on the public uh, feedback. So I think that shows that as a community, as a staff, uh, we listened to what the uh, public said. Um, we made adjustments. I know not everyone will be happy, but I think it shows that this has been a process which we've been listening the whole time. So I'm really, really supportive of these uh, recommendations and the OCP and just the level of engagement uh, I've seen from day one when we started off in the charrettes with uh, folks that were representative of our community sitting down with tape. And uh, I feel like it was almost monopoly pieces, I feel like, and uh, just plotting this out. So um, I'm very supportive of this and, and I hope the rest of council is too. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thanks, Councillor Pahal. Um, Councillor Albrecht, you are next, please. Yes, thank you. and and. I'm going to agree with Councillor Pahal on, on a lot of things. I just really want to um, express my deepest appreciation to Mr. Johansson and uh, pa Patrick Osterick and the MODIS group. Um, you guys have been amazing through this whole process. And like Councillor Pahal, I've been nothing but uh, totally impressed with the, um, the engagement process, um, actively listening. Uh, to residents. Uh, while um, not everyone necessarily will be 100% happy, it's hard to, uh, to have that kind of uh, unanimous consent. Um, I think that uh, we've done an incredible job of providing a little more clarity, a little more, um, let's say, peace of mind. Uh, just even uh, the idea for ground-oriented development uh, to be sensitive to the existing uh, neighborhoods, uh, the character of those neighborhoods, and trying to, to have development guidelines or development permit guidelines to uh, take that all into consideration, I think is, is a, a pretty nice step. Um, as well as uh, providing that further clarification around the, uh, the, uh, the pathway on the south side in that environmental area. And um, it's just a concept that uh, will require a, a bunch more steps before it ever became reality. And I was reminded by uh, uh, some fellow councillors that up in the, uh, the downtown core, we, we had um, this kind of OCP done uh, a long time ago. And uh, some of these developments have just taken over 30 years to get to achieve what that vision was back in that time. 
So this is not something that's going to happen overnight. And, and it, it provides a, a guideline to uh, establish the kind of community that we want to see in our future. So I'm uh, very supportive of this and uh, happy to see this going forward. Thank you. Great, thanks, Councillor Wallace. Thank you, and I'd love to echo um, Councillor Pahal and Albrecht's statements. Um, this, this whole process has been so well done, Patrick and Carl, um, and the, the public feedback and listening to our public, and yes, we can't make everybody happy, but um, when, it, when it comes to the environment, I'm, I'm glad that you said um, it's going to take steps, Carl, because it is. It's something that, you know, we have to, we have intact ecosystems already in place. So, you know, we have to be sensitive to that in moving forward and, and um, in enhancing and restoration is something that we have to be sensitive to as well. So I'm pleased um, with those recommendations. Also, I'm really excited about the community amenities in 196, um, the SkyTrain station. I think we are so much better in partnership and that, that strengthening in building with the, uh, the Surrey and, and the township. And I, you know, listening to the public from Surrey township and city and building an amenity, you know, when we talk about um, inclusivity and safety, it's something that we can involve the community in making that happen. Just like uh, the Nekamaka River, which runs, you know, through the township and you know, town is part of it and Surrey, it's, it's another partnership. So um, I just want to say, uh, I, I'm so grateful uh, for the work that's been done um, by MODIS and, and Johansson and staff and council and, and the public and, you know, having 15 people come, come to a public hearing and that was a long public hearing, but such valuable um, information from the public. Uh, so I just think this whole process from day one um, with the charrettes and, and the visual and everything has been done so well. So I'm very excited for the future of Langley City. Great, thanks, Councillor Wallace. Yeah, I, I'd like to see more public hearings with that great of attendance, quite honestly. It was, uh, it was a great conversation. Uh, Councillor Storboom, you were at next. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you again to uh, Mr. Ostrick, Mr. Johansson, and the whole team who put this plan together. It's an amazing plan. It's a vision for the future, and it enables us for today to accommodate the higher density that we're looking for to accommodate SkyTrain coming to Langley City. This is going to be a brand new day for Langley City moving into the future. And we are working with TransLink and other agencies so that our official community plan is as current and up to date and uh, visioned for the future uh, as possible. Um, the previous plan uh, was decades ago and uh, now it's time to move into the future really appreciate all the hard work that's gone into this. I know that there have been a lot of concerns about this, that, and the other thing. That doesn't mean those things are going to happen right away, but it is natural to see these kind of densities grow over time as we move into the future. And as our aging inventory of housing uh, deteriorates and goes beyond its best before date, it will have to be replaced. This will give homeowners some options looking forward to the future. And I hope that they can appreciate that a lot of considerations gone into this. I support the uh, uh, resolution brought forward and thank you for uh, all the hard work once again. It, it's, uh, it's been a, an amazing process. I'm happy to have been a part of it and I really appreciate all the hard work that's gone into it. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Great, thank you, Councillor Sturboom. Uh, Councillor James, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I can't not speak. This has been an outstanding process with so much community engagement and so much thought and care and consideration given to everybody and everything from the environment to the community, to the citizens, to the business community, to everyone involved. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna echo this is an amazing document and I stand fully behind it. So thank you, Carl, Patrick, 
the team that you guys have put together and assembled and all the care and consideration you gave to everyone and everything along the process. This has been outstanding. Okay, any other comments? Um, I just have a few questions just for clarity. I know we're not really gonna change anything, but on page 137, um, addressing climate change, it's in the environmental solutions. So um, I guess it's 5.7, the flooding hazards. Um, we know with climate change, we're gonna have rising temperatures of plus two, which equals rising water because glaciers are gonna melt at a faster pace. So um, this kind of kind of ties in also with the river hood or the river um, district plan um, about building. Is there anything we can do about, I guess this is more staff, I think maybe, um, you know, the river is already high during the winter where we can't use the trails and such. So I know Surrey has been working on the Nicomaco River and um, is that going to change the flow for us as well? Or have we looked into that? I don't know. I, I don't know how to ask this question because I think maybe we have to ask Surrey. So I don't know if it's um, a question for Mr. Johansson. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, through to your, uh, your question. Uh, in regards to policy 5.7, uh, one of the items that uh, uh, the city does periodically is, is take a look at its flood uh, uh, elevation bylaw and flood construction levels, uh, just to ensure that they're current to uh, what evolving conditions uh, there may be. Um, our engineering staff might have a few more comments about that, but I, I can say that in terms of you know the, the vision of the plan, the, the land uses around the floodplain, coupled with uh, that um, review of our, of our uh, flood construction levels uh, is something that uh, will help us uh, stay on top of those issues. Okay, great. I just want to make sure it is being addressed somewhere in there because it doesn't actually say it, it refers to it. So I just wanted clarification for that. That's all. Thank you. Um, the other thing I have is the stats on page uh, 179. If you get into the regional contact statements. Are the stats current enough to use even with the COVID that's happened in this last year? Um, so through, uh, or I guess uh, in response to the mayor's question, um, the stats that are included in there um, are as accurate of a number as we can certainly um, uh, determine in terms of projections. Uh, as you know, um, COVID certainly has uh, created a lot of, uh, of, of uncertainty. Um, and at this point, there is no precedent to look at to try and, and, um, and incorporate any other kind of, uh, of, of thinking to the projection models. So it's, it's as close as possible based on all the information that we have. Um, and I, I, I'm not sure there's, uh, yeah, I'm not sure there's um, anything else that we can do to try and, and incorporate, uh, you know, the, the, the impacts of COVID at this point. I think he's going to mute. I don't know why. Um, my other question, I think this might be for um, Mr. Chung. On page 179, flip to it, on page one, oh no, 171, pardon me, page 171 of it, there's a plan for, uh, um, oh, the strategies, the plans and strategies to create. Um, I see one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Would that be something that we could create committees or task force for, for the six councillors? Mr. Chung, on um, page 171. Your Worship, do you mean the public ramp plan for SkyTrain guideways and core? No, alignment with other plans, page 171 implementation. 
plans and strategies to create. It's got community safety, urban forest, um, amenity contributions, Glover Road, Initiation Boulevard, public room for SkyTrain and Heritage Resource Reference Guide. So there's six of them there and I'm, I, I just had a thought uh, there's six counselors. Could each counselor take one of these on? Well, certainly, council can discuss that, and that's the direction of council. And uh, okay. we'll certainly, each want to accommodate that. Okay, great. Thank you. Just a question that I wanted answered. Um, the last thing on my mind, and I don't know if everybody's going to agree or not, the scratchy pictures. I'm not a fan of them. The scratchy pictures that are used with all the doodles and everything. Um, yeah, I know there's been complaints on Facebook too about it and, and such, but they're really not um, great pictures to show 200th Street or the downtown. That's just my feeling on it, that's all. It's very cartoonish and very unclear of what's actually going on, so. Okay, so we got two motions on the floor. Um, and I can give you the page numbers if you want them, or do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> I figured you did by the look on your face, so thank you. Hey, sorry, Madam Mayor, can I interrupt? I have one, one motion that Council directs staff to include the proposals in Table 2 to the OCP Bylaw 3200 for consideration at third reading. I'm not sure if I missed. Oh, okay, but we still have to receive the report, correct? Oh, I'm sorry. That, yes. uh, okay, no, that's okay. I know Miss Kenny isn't here tonight, so I just want to make sure that um, it all flows. So um, we will do um, Councillor Pahal's motion on the floor. Is there any way we can bring that up so maybe everybody can see it? Does everybody need to see it? Miss Kuzak, do you have a clear indication of what the motion is? Uh, what I have is that council directs staff to include the proposals in table two to the new OCP bylaw 3200 for consideration at third reading. Okay. Is and that does... accurate? Council okay. Paul? Uh, through the mayor, yes. Thank you. And in regards to any of the motions that Ms. that Moda shared with us, um, is that including that? That would be a question for Mr. Johansson or Mr. Ostrick. I have it as table two. I just wanted as clarification that it does include that. Yes, I believe that's the case. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, I will call the vote on Councillor Pahal's motion. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries unanimously. Um, the second motion, oh, Mr. Johansson, go ahead. I'll wait, uh, I'll put my hand up for afterwards. Okay. Sorry, you'll have to excuse me. I burnt my throat in the heat. So I'm having a really hard time talking. Um, okay, so the second motion is that the report of the Director of Development Services dated, oh, that the report of the Director of Development Services dated July 7th, 2021 be received for information. I need a mover and a seconder, I guess, on that. Councillor Sturdy from Councillor Martin. Um, all those in favor? And that carries. Excellent. Okay, well, thank you very much. Mr. Johansson. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I was just gonna mention, as outlined in the report, uh, that uh, we will take these uh, the updates that are outlined in table two and uh, make those updates to the bylaw. And uh, there may be some minor text and map updates from uh, the completion of legal review that we would also incorporate to the bylaw and make sure council is aware of that uh, when we bring the bylaw back for third consideration of third reading. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to. 20137 and 20139 Fraser Highway. Bylaw 3177, Official Community Plan Amendment Number 16, OCP 04 21, 
First and second reading of a bylaw to amend City of Langley official community plan bylaw to incorporate provisions for higher density mixed use development, amend the lands, land use designation of the subject properties 20137 and 20139 Fraser Highway. Um, Mr. Johansson, do you wish to speak to the purpose of this bylaw amendment, please? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Uh, this official community plan or OCP amendment application represents the second mixed use redevelopment application in the Fraser Industrial District uh, as outlined in the new OCP, in the new draft OCP. Um, so an amendment is necessary uh, for this application at this point as it's currently designated service commercial in the current OCP and the proposed new OCP land use for this application is transit oriented core. And that's consistent with the proposed new OCP in terms of involving mixed use development and a transit supported density of close to a three floor area ratio or FAR. Uh, this density is the second highest in the city for a six story building, uh, the highest uh, actually being the previous application just west of this property. And uh, it's well suited for being directly adjacent to the Fraser Highway Transit Corridor and within a five to 10 minute walk of the future 203 SkyTrain station. And this amendment application is being brought forward to enable the application to proceed prior to the adoption of the new OCP. Thank you. Great, thank you. So motion on the floor is that the bylaw cited as the city of Langley official community plan 2005, number 2600, amendment number 16, 2021, number 3177 be read a first and second time. Can I get a mover and a second, please? Councillor Bahal, Councillor Sturdeboom, and Mr. Sturdeboom, go ahead for discussion. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And this is a very exciting proposal from a developer that we've been doing work with uh, for uh, a while now. Uh, we've got a good working relationship, and Mr. Johansson has done an excellent job of uh, working with this developer and his team to put together a number of these uh, new higher density models. This is for the Wash World site at 201A and Fraser Highway. I can remember when we opened up the Wash World and now it's already gone to a place where it's past its best. <laughs> so we are looking to replace it with this six story 144 unit um, um, mixed use uh, uh, building. It was well received at the advisory design panel and a number of uh, suggestions were brought forward. Uh, again, we have a good working relationship with this developer. So all those recommendations brought forward by the advisory design panel team were considered and implemented uh, in conjunction uh, with what was available and what Mr. Johansson and his team could uh, negotiate. So my compliments to all for a tremendous effort for this very exciting building going on a corner that is in a gateway um, um, location for our downtown core. Uh, I am supporting this uh, resolution uh, and I recommend that my council colleagues would do the same, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Great, thank you, Councillor Sturdivant. Any other comments or, okay, I call the vote. All those in favor, any opposed, that carries. Okay, moving on to OCP amendment bylaw number 3177, public consultation and adoption requirements. And Mr. Johansson, do you wish to speak to the purpose of this report as well, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, good afternoon once again, Mayor and Council. Uh, this report recommends referring this uh, OCP amendment application to uh, Kwantlen First Nation, Metro Vancouver, School District 35 and TransLink uh, for review and comment prior to a proposed July 26 public hearing. Uh, I also note that since the draft uh, official community plan is, is well into the final phases and has uh, gone through a public hearing. Uh, and this is the seventh application uh, that we've referred to uh, these agencies in the last half year. And that the uh, proposed amendment is consistent with the new OCP. Um, staff are reducing the referral time um, in terms of uh, when we have public hearings uh, from first and second reading. Uh, just that this is the seventh application that's gone through this process. And it's uh, it's uh, very similar to uh, the ones that have previously gone through. So we're proposing the public hearing to occur on uh, July 26th. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. So I read the motion is that council one, direct staff to send copies of official community plan amendment bylaw number 3177 
20137 and 20139 Fraser Highway to the following organizations and authorities for consultation prior to holding a public hearing on July 26, 2021 in consideration of the requirements set out in section 475 of the Local Government Act. Pontland First Nation, Metro Vancouver, TransLink and School District number 35. And two, consider official community plan amendment bylaw number 3177 in conjunction with the 2021 to 2025 financial plan bylaw number 3151 and the regional liquid and solid waste management plans in accordance with section 4773 of the local government act. Need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Wallace, Councillor Bahal, any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor, any opposed, that carries. On to bylaw 3178, zoning amendment number 178 RZ05-21 and development permit DP04-21. First and second reading of a bylaw to rezone the properties located at 20137 and 20139 Fraser Highway from C2 service commercial zone to the C1 downtown commercial zone to accommodate a six story 144 unit apartment and 842 square meter commercial mixed use development. I believe Mr. Johansson, you wish to speak to the purpose of this bylaw amendment also. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, thank you, Ma uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, this uh, zoning amendment uh, application and development permit application uh, proposes, as you can see in, in the report and the drawings before you, uh, a six story mixed use building with 144 units and uh, a corner plaza uh, at the intersection of Fraser Highway and, and 201A Street. And uh, that corner plaza is something that uh, we really want to emphasize, uh, be part of the, the application, something that reflects our, uh, our draft OCP uh, public open space uh, guidelines. And the proposal also aligns with, uh, like I said before, the OCP land use, but it also includes uh, parking rates and building setbacks that are consistent with what is being contemplated uh, for our new zoning bylaw, which is also uh, consistent with uh, the new OCP. And that includes reduced rates for one bedroom uh, commercial and visitor parking. And also um, uh, similar to the, the application that came forward uh, for uh, the property just to the west, uh, introducing the concept of shared parking, commercial parking and residential visitor parking. And, and doing that in a manner that's uh, uh, consistent with other municipalities that, that have uh, rapid transit and also ensuring that it's, per, it's justified by the engineer's report. Uh, so I just wanted to, to highlight that. And um, like I said before, the, uh, as a part of the new zoning bylaw and implementing the, uh, the land uses and the design uh, in the new OCP, we're contemplating adjusting the setbacks for the C1 zone. Uh, in order to uh, create more urban uh, buildings on our major street corridors and to enable uh, what we call zero lot line buildings. Uh, and that's part of uh, what enables us also to pull the building back from the corner in order to get that, uh, that public open space or that plaza that's being proposed. And as you can see in the uh, explanatory memo, um, it was uh, supported by uh, the advisory design panel and uh, a large part of their advice was to see if we can continue to upgrade that uh, public realm. And uh, should, should the application receive third reading, uh, the coordination between the design of the plaza and uh, the streetscape on the city right of way will be coordinated further and finalized before it's brought back for, for adoption. So council uh, will be able to see that and, and see the finalized design uh, for that plaza, which right now is is what I would call a working drawing, but uh, is really meant to uh, show uh, the key elements that are being proposed. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Johansson. Um, I just wanna actually take this time to thank you for the reports that do come to us in this council. It's very easy to read and it, it's laid out so well. And I, I just wanna thank you for that because I know you staff, your staff does a lot of work on it. Um, but it's 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 so easy to read. Um, so thank you for that. Thank okay. you for yeah. that, uh, that put together those reports on my behalf. So yeah, just reading like you know the shared parking and stuff like it just made sense and it was easy to read and, and it flows really well. So thank you for doing that for for us. <laughs> 
Okay, so the motion is that the bylaw cited as a zoning bylaw 1996, number 2100, amendment number 178, 2021, number 3178, be read a first and second time. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Uh, Councillor Wallace, Councillor Bahal, any further discussion on that? Uh, Councillor Bahal, Councillor Wallace. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and to the mayor to staff. Uh, just a question. Um, for the third reading, I know there was some discussion about the storage, uh, as far as storage and washing and bicycle parking. Would you expect a updated drawing for third reading that reflects uh, the segmentation of the washing from the storage? Yes, through the mayor to Councilor Paul, that's something we will uh, communicate to the applicant. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's all, Madam Mayor. Great, thank you. Councillor Wallace, Thank you. I, I love the design concept of this in the plaza. And my, my question is um, in regards to public art and the contributions from the developer and in the design panel, um, adv advisory design panel meetings, is there any conversation ever talked about what, uh, you know, as far as public art goes, interactive public art. I just, you know, we're talking about a plaza and a perfect opportunity um, to showcase um, public art on a, an, on a grander scheme. And um, I'm just curious. Yes, to a mayor to Councillor Wallace, I, I think at, at the, the level of design uh, with the, the plaza and the, the discussion at, at the ADP, I think the idea was to uh, create the space for the potential for uh, future public art. Um, but in the, in the interim, uh, really emphasize opportunities for the, you know, the movable uh, seating, uh, trees and grates and that sort of thing. Those sort of key elements that help to uh, create that plaza. Um, we don't have at this point with the ADP uh, specific uh, discussion points around uh, public art. Uh, that's something that, that we may, uh, you know, look to explore in the future, but it doesn't limit uh, the possibility of having public art in their future. The only caution I would have is, is to ensure that it doesn't uh, uh, impact uh, the, uh, the usability of, of the plaza and those seating areas. But, uh, it, you know, and, and public art can take many forms. I think in this case, we're really trying to emphasize, you know, the, the use of uh, lighting inlaid into the pavements and that sort of thing to create a neat uh, a nighttime effect, uh, so that that helps to be, become more of a of a public realm art piece, if you will. If I could just uh, further, and when you're talking about lighting and and uh, um, even sculpture, and the cost of what it you know what it costs to do a 3D sculpture in metal, and it being something that I don't know, I think it would be. It would be interesting for the advisory panel if a developer was to come in and you know really believed in the public art piece and the you know the public realm and the interactive piece. I, I think it would be um, a way that we could afford to get more public art in in the in the community. I know that the public arts and culture committee. It's you know when we're looking at um, doing public art pieces the cost of doing sculpt sculptures is is so grand right so i don't know it's just uh it might be a way to get more public art yeah yes yeah, so, and if i may i don't i don't think the door is closed i mean it may be a, a question for the applicant at the public hearing but uh the plaza design does provide some flexibility for that great thank you councillor sturdivant uh Thank you, Madam Mayor and Mr. Johansson and Councilor Wallace for your conversation around public art. I, I think that the advisory design panel was more interested in the functionality of the plaza. There was some artistic expression denoted with regard to uh, the lighting for that particular area. And uh, there was a special concern raised by Councilor Hall about the uh, functionality of the uh, uh, area immediately uh, in front of the building uh, to accommodate the uh, the bus stop there. So practicality was the order of the day. But please remember, all of these development applications, they do provide for money for public art. And we have a tremendous amount of money sitting in reserve waiting for public art proposals. So I would suggest that there's plenty of opportunity to bring these uh, uh, conversations forward uh, with some public art proposals because uh, Lord knows these developers been through the nose for this public art. 
And uh, I really like to see something come of it. Um, I hope uh, it's okay if I say that. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay, any other comments or questions before our discussion? No, seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor, say aye. Any opposed? And that carries. Okay, on to bylaw 3168, official community plan amendment bylaw. Third reading of a bylaw to amend the city land and official community plan bylaw in order to inc incorporate provisions for higher density mid rise residential uses at the properties addressed 20179, 20189, and 20199 53A Avenue. That the bylaw cited as the City of Langley Official Community Plan Bylaw 2005. Number 2600, Amendment Number 14, 2021. Number 3168, be read a third time. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Martin, Councillor Storteboom, any discussion? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. On to bylaw 3169, Zoning Amendment Bylaw and Development Permit Number 09-20, third reading of a bylaw to rezone the properties located at 20179, 20189, and 20199, 53A Avenue, from the RS1 Single Family Residential Zone to the CD74 Comprehensive Development Zone to accommodate a five-story 56-unit apartment development that the city that the bylaw cited as the zoning bylaw 1996 number 2100 amendment number 175 2021 number 3169 be read a third time i need to i need to move in a seconder please sort of him seconder wallace thank you any further discussion call the vote all those in favor any opposed and that carries Okay, on to administrative reports, June 2021 community grant report. A motion that city council endorsed the recommendation of the community grant committee to award community grants totaling $8,400 to the following organizations. Archway Community Services, Fraser Valley Cultural Diversity, $1,000. Boys and Girls Club of Langley, $2,000. Echo Waves Community Volunteer Club, $500. Langley Arts Council, $2,500. Langley Ukulele Association, $1,650. Volunteer Cancer Driver Society, $750 for a total of $8,400. Need a mover and a seconder, please. Uh, Councillor Stirlgren, Councillor Bahal, any discussion on that? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. Thank you, Mr. Lake, for making yourself available. Local Government Development Approvals Program Grant Application Resubmission. Submission, or the motion for it is that Council 1, that Council endorses the UBCM Local Government Development Approvals Program Grant Application for the Major Storm Overland Flow Path Development. Two, that the City provide overall grant management, and three, that the remaining project budget will be funded within the City of Langley's approved 2021 capital plan. I uh, need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Albrecht, Councillor Paul, any discussion on that? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. Um, City Park Infrastructure Grant Application, motion forward number one is that a grant application be submitted under the Canada Community Revitalization, Revitalization Fund for the City Park Field Upgrade Project north of the 207th Street parking lot. And two, the council supports the project and agrees to commit to the city share of $750,000 of the project. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Wallace, Councillor Bahal, any further discussion? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. Uh, D, BC Active Transportation Infrastructure Program Grant Application 
208 Street Cycling Project. A council endorses the British Columbia Active Transportation Infrastructure Grant application for the 208 Street Cycling Improvements Project. Nina Mover and a second, please. Councillor Albrecht, Councillor Storderboom, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Any opposed? Okay, that carries. All right, on to new and unfinished business. Um, we'll start with motions. Uh, so first motion is a request for federal government to support to investigate in residential school sites, which I'm bringing forward on. The, so whereas the recent discovery of the remains of 215 Aboriginal children at the site of a former residential school on the Tikamlots to Waswaspan First Nation territory has once again brought to light the dark past of the residential school system. And whereas there may be other sites in this country where similar conditions exist, and whereas some First Nations, Métis groups, or Inuit councils may be interested in pursuing further investigation of these sites, and whereas the federal government announced on June 9, 2021, a commitment to earmark $27 million specifically toward assisting Indigenous communities in locating and memorializing children who died at residential schools. Therefore, it be, sorry, therefore, it be resolved that Council authorize the Mayor to write to the Prime Minister and other federal and provincial officials as appropriate to request that the federal government commit to providing adequate resourcing to any First Nation, Métis governized organization or Inuit council in Canada that requests by way of a banned council resolution or other appropriate communication from a legitimately representative body of the organization, a desire to investigate with ground penetrating radar or by other means, the possibility that remains of res residential school re residents may be interred on the grounds of those former schools or elsewhere within their traditional territories. And further that this resourcing also includes funds to scientifically ascertain the identities of any found remains. And further that this resourcing also includes funds to repatriate any found remains to their families, clans, or nations of, of origin. And be it resolved further that the letter include a request that the government implement the 94 recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Can I get a seconder on that, please? Councillor Wallace, any discussion on that? Councillor Storderboom, please go ahead. Yes, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. I really appreciate this very timely consideration. Although it's out of our jurisdiction, I believe it's touched the hearts of many of our residents and they would like to see some kind of a response uh, from our community uh, for the ministers uh, and uh, in keeping with some kind of a, a resolution to, uh, uh, to get us some answers that we really want uh, to know about, uh, uh, you know, what went on like 150 or, or 100 years ago, 50 years ago, um, what, what the records show, where are the records? There's, there's a lot of unanswered questions around this. And I confess, it's humbling to think of all of the uh, atrocities committed uh, in this country um, uh, over the course of time. Um, I mean, you know, the Japanese internment, uh, the First World War, U Ukrainian internment, uh, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the Chinese railway workers, uh, um, and, and their treatment and uh, the Indo-Canadian community uh, um, being uh, uh, victimized uh, like 100 years ago. It, it's, it's terrible. Uh, but I think we can learn from this. I think we need to find these answers. And so my comment to you is, uh, you know, uh, that we uh, choose uh, wisely as to where we would send this. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing um, uh, Minister Lametti uh, for justice and, and then Ministers Miller and Bennett, as well as the Prime Minister, would be appropriate. Um, but uh, I look forward to their response. And although it may be that uh, this work is already underway, I think that we can chime in. And so I support this resolution and thank you for bringing it forward. 
So I wonder if we can do a friendly amendment then to the prime. Oh, and it does state at other federal and provincial officials. So I don't know if we have to specifically do the names, but um, I'm sure staff will do a great job of, of looking into that counselor stored room. Thank you. Any other further discussion on this? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? Thank you. And then we have number two, Councillor Bahal, your thank you letter to the province and federal government. Perfect. Thank, uh, you. thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, so I'll just read what I circulated. Um, so if what I say is different than what's circulated, please go with what I circulated. Uh, that Langley City Council directs staff to write a letter to the Honorable John Horgan, thanking him and the provincial government for advocating to the federal government to get the Surrey Langley Skytrain extension from King George to Langley City fully funded. Um, are you seconding that, Councillor Martin, or did you want to speak to that? And Councillor Sturdivant? Uh Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I uh, support the resolution. Uh, I might like to consider uh, including our uh, um, MLAs uh, uh, in expressions of gratitude uh, for their effort. Although they haven't been on the job a terribly long time, they helped push it across the line. I really appreciate that. So I promise to promote them if they can get it for us. And if we can do that, I'd like to uh, make this friendly amendment uh, that we can include them in our uh, letter of appreciation. Uh, can I get a seconder for that? I will second that. I, I think we can do a friendly amendment. It was passed out in the correspondence beforehand, which everybody receives. So um, Councillor Bahal, if you're okay with that. Yeah, okay. Yep. All right. Um, okay, anyone else? Thank you for bringing that forward. Councillor Bahal, all those in favor? Okay, any opposed? Wonderful. Okay, um, correspondence response for the Minister of Public Safety addressing human trafficking. Do we just wanna receive that for information? Excuse me, Madam Mayor. Yes, I will get to your notice of motion afterwards, Councillor Martin. Is uh, that what you were asking in regards? Yeah, I thought that's where we were. No motions and notices of motions, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's under new business. So correspondence, I just wanna get that over with. Um, just receive for information. Yes, Councillor Sturdivant, Councillor Albrecht. Councillor Sturdivant, did you have a comment? Uh, yes, please, Madam Mayor. No, I, I, I do appreciate the response from the minister and uh, I, I, I really feel for this issue in particular. I, I guess, you know, the rest of the council recognizes this. The idea that human trafficking is being experienced by victims in our community every day it is, is stunning to me. It infuriates me to think that people are being used and abused like this. And I would very much like to see us uh, create uh, some sense of greater awareness around this so that uh, those people who are being abused in this fashion um, can find that freedom that we hold ourselves uh, to so dearly. So uh, moving forward, I, I would suggest that we should consider how else we can promote this awareness and uh, so I, I do uh, appreciate the minister's uh, correspondence and I, I support receiving it, but I, I'd like to do more with it if at all possible. And I challenge my council colleagues uh, uh, to consider how best we can do that. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Yep, thank you, Councillor Wallace, go ahead. I appreciate that, Councillor um, Sturdivant, I agree. It is uh, an atrocious issue that is going on within our community, within our schools, and has been going on for a long time. In moving forward, receiving a letter is great. And you know, we, we were given the numbers and the way that they're going to help, but um, those dollars don't even touch on what, what needs to happen. And if we can continue our partnership with the Langley School District in bringing, for, bringing forward awareness and education and touching base you know, every six months or a year, I know that Councillor James and myself sit on the liaison committee for um, Langley School District. And if it's something that we keep at the forefront of conversation, because I do agree with you, um, Councillor Sturderboom, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's very, very alarming. So um, thank you. Yeah, and I do believe that those that were in attendance from the school board are uh, received another presentation since um, and are trying to 
move with it. So uh, I think that's the best um, place for it to um, within the school system. So, okay, uh, so we're gonna send that off. Everybody's good with receiving that for information. Yes, okay, we are on to Councillor Wallace. Sorry, and maybe, um, it, I don't know if this is a place, but it, would it be okay that we got that response and sent it off to the school district that we did receive that letter that, um, so they have that response? I believe they've received their own from my understanding and she's gone and attended already and given presentations to the school. Well, they probably, okay. Yeah, so we can, we can have staff I, I, to check with that. Doesn't, maybe. It doesn't hurt to double check. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yep, perfect. Thanks. Okay. Um, Councillor Martin, your notice of motion. Thank you. Whereas local governments have been raising concerns for, of long delays with ambulance response time and first responders responding to increasing number of medical emergency service alarm, MESA calls, due to lack of inadequate number of ambulances being available. Whereas the recent heat wave exacerbated the shortcoming of the pre-hospital care system, which created unacceptable delays in ambulance response time. Whereas first responders had to respond to an extraordinary number of MESA calls during the recent heat wave and endured unreasonable delays in response time by the ambulance to release them from the calls. Whereas first responders play an essential role in the pre-hospital care system and in supporting BC emergency health services with the delivery of the quickest possible response to patients requiring time critical care. Whereas the Auditor General of British Columbia's report published in February of 2019 on access to emergency health care services provided recommendations to make transformational changes to the pre-hospital care system. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the province of BC and BC Emergency Health Services immediately implement the recommendations from the Auditor General's report, including, but not limited to, to increase the number of paramedics and ambulances, as well as the plan to introduce a new dispatch approach to shorten response times for patients who need the care the most and improve coordination with fire departments to support consistent application of medical standards, information sharing, and integrated dispatch system and improvements to patient care. That's the notice of motion. Great, thank you. Councillor James? I'm seconding it. Oh, okay. Did you have something to add to that as well? Okay, any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor? We'll see it next week. <laughs> yeah, because we already have a Back-to-back -back council meetings. Okay, so we are going, a motion that the meeting adjourn. I need a mover and a seconder, please, but please don't go anywhere. Councillor Bahal. Sorry, Madam Mayor. Yeah. Uh, can I just get you to, to uh, do the motion to hold the closed first before we adjourn? Oh, I'm sorry, I told, I told you this. No problem. <laughs> I apologize. Okay, so motion to hold a closed meeting that a portion of the special council meeting immediately following this meeting be closed to the public as some subject matter being considered relates to items which comply with the following closed meeting criteria specified in section 90 of the community charter. One, a part of the council meeting may be closed to the public if the subject matter being considered relates to or is one or more of the following. B, labor relations and other employee relations. K, negotiations and related discussions respecting the proposed provision of a municipal service that are at their preliminary, preliminary stages and that in view of the council could reasonably be expected to harm the interests of the municipality if they were held in public. L, discussions with municipal officers and employees respecting municipal objectives measures and progress reports for the purposes of preparing an annual report under section 98 annual municipal report. I need a mover and a seconder. Uh, Councillor Stortemoon, Councillor Wallace, all those in favor? Okay, so now I need a motion that the meeting adjourn. 
need a mover and a seconder. Councillor Storterboom, Councillor Bahal. All those in favor, please don't leave yet. Thank you, that passes. So we have a special closed meeting, uh, council meeting now, which we begin on this. Okay, sorry, let me read this again. We have a special council meeting now, which we can begin on the same Zoom link. And then for the closed portion of the meeting, we will leave this meeting to go into the closed meeting Zoom link. And once we have finished the closed portion of the meeting, we will come back to this link for the one agenda item that is in that is on the open portion. So if I can just jump, I'm sorry, Madam Mayor, if I can just jump in. Yep. Um, if we have got one member of the public still here in attendance, and if she wishes to come back to the uh, open portion of the meeting that we'll be following and is somehow disconnected, she can simply re-click the link that she has. Okay? The, the, okay, it'll be the same link. So if anybody gets dropped when we leave this meeting and go to the next, um, then they can simply re-click the, the regular meeting and, and rejoin. Okay. okay, at the appropriate time. They may be in the waiting room for some time until council's finished with the closed session. Okay. All right, so we will move on to the adoption of the agenda, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. <laughs> adoption of the July 12, 2021 special agenda that the July 12, 2021 special agenda be adopted as circulated. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Bahal, Councillor Stortaboom, all those in favor. Any opposed? Okay. Um, so I need a mover and a seconder to move into a closed session. Okay. Uh, Wallace and Stortaboom, all those in favor? Okay. So okay. Paulo, uh, Ms. Kuzak will now place any members of the public in attendance in the waiting room until council has finished the closed portion of this meeting. Okay. And I'm okay. just going to actually pause recording now that we're going to be going into a closed meeting. Okay. So everybody can now go ahead and leave this meeting and go to the closed link. So, excellent. Well, welcome back everyone to part two of the regular slash special council meeting of Langley City. Um, so all that we have left on the agenda today is our administrative report which is the 2022 RCMP approval in principle. Uh, at the June 28, 2021 regular council meeting, the following motion was moved by Councillor Storterboom and seconded by Councillor Pahal. And then the motion was postponed by a vote of council until after council had met with Superintendent Marsden to discuss how the Langley detachment proposed budget and internal plans align with Langley City's interim strategic plan goal to create new protective and supportive services. Council has now met with Superintendent Marsden, so the motion is now back on the floor for discussion and subsequent vote. Uh, that Council authorize a letter of approval in principle be sent to the Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General to maintain the detachment strength at 51.35 members and increase the 100% RCMP budget by $260,434 for an RCMP total budget cap of $11,586,126 dollars. So need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Sturdivant. Oh, actually, oh. Madam Mayor, it's been moved and seconded already, so it's just open for discussion now. Okay, beautiful. Any discussion? Councillor Storterboom, you have your hand up. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, just a matter of clarity, I, I think it was Councillor Pahal that brought this up originally, and I seconded his motion. I'd like to take credit for it, but I'll just congratulate him for, you know, setting up a situation where we got to meet the new officer in charge. I think that was brilliant. And uh, I'm happy that we met with him. I think it was a, a good discussion. And I won't belabor the point except to say that, you know, I will support the resolution. It seems to be a matter of visioning and it's in keeping with uh, what we have been doing in years gone by. So, uh, yeah, I'm all for it. And uh, 
I encourage my council colleagues to uh, support it as well. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Great, thank you. Can we do a friendly amendment there, um, Ms. Kuzak, or do we have to? Uh, actually, uh, with our new minute format, we don't record um, the movers and seconders anymore, so it's irrelevant at this point. Relevant. Okay. Well, well, thanks, Nathan. Anyway, just so you know. We'll give Nathan the credit anyway, right? Okay. All right, any further discussion on that? Okay, all those in favor? Any opposed? And that carries. All right, that the special council meeting adjourn. Uh, Move in a seconder. Councillor Bahal, Councillor Stodeboom, all those in favor? And that carries. All right, so just a reminder we have a public hearing tonight at 7 p.m. on the other link. So I will see you back here on Zoom then. Have a great 35 minutes. Great. See you on the flip flop. <laughs>